Welcome to Chartmill. In this video, I'm going to create a basic screen for swing traders that can serve as a starting point. It is a simple technical screen that ensures you only select stocks that are not underpriced, which have sufficient liquidity, which are in a long-term uptrend, and that move sufficiently in price. Now, don't let the simplicity of this screen fool you. That is precisely its strength. You will be able to use this screen day in and day out. The big advantage of this screen is that you can select additional filters to suit your own trading strategy. And even more, you can expand this basic screen with filters that match the current market conditions. What I mean by this and how to do so will be covered later in this video. For now, I will first show you how to compose the basic screen and explain why exactly these filters were retained. Because I think it's important to understand why specific filters are used. It gives you more insight into the screener and it will allow you to compose screens yourself more easily. So much for the intro, now let's quickly start creating the screen in Chartmill. I am currently on the home page and the main menu is visible on the left. If your screen only shows the icons, click once on these three horizontal lines to reveal the full menu. Now select the stock screener and by default the general menu is displayed and that is also where we will set our first filters. The first two filters I'm going to set here are minimum price and minimum market capitalization. Click on price and choose a minimum price for the stock from the drop down menu. I usually choose a value between three and $10. In this menu, the choice is limited to three, five and $10, but you can set any value by using a custom filter and more info about that in a separate video whose link I put in the description below. For this basic screen, I maintain a price of at least $3. Then open a drop down menu under market cap and select at least small caps, which corresponds to companies with a market capitalization of at least 300 million. Both these parameters are used to keep out penny stocks from our basic selection. And the reasons for avoiding them are rather obvious. On the SACS website, we read, academic studies show that over-the-counter stocks tend to be highly illiquid, are often the target of perceived market manipulation, generate negative and volatile investment returns on average, and rarely grow into a large company or move to a public listing. So those are some pretty good reasons to avoid these type of stocks as a swing trader. By merely using these two filters, I have reduced the total number of stocks from over 20,500 to just above 7,600. I use one more filter from this general menu. Open the average volume tab and select a minimum volume. I pick a daily volume of at least 300,000, which the stock must meet. This is calculated based on the last 50 trading days. 300,000 may seem a bit low to some of you, but it is important not to set the filters too strict for an initial selection. You can always adjust them afterwards if you find that there are still too many stocks in your final selection. Sufficient volume is important to maintain the balance between supply and demand. The higher the volume, the easier buying and selling is without having too great an impact on the price. Shares that are traded with a high volume, the term liquidity is also used for this, create a lower spread. This is the margin between the bid and the offer price. And this matters to the active swing trader. The smaller the spread, the smaller the impact will be on your profitability. I will continue with the filters under the performance menu. In fact, I'm going to implement the trend filter. Important for this basic screen, I assume that you are looking for longs. So you want to select stocks that are in a rising trend. There are obviously a lot of different filter options to define a rising trend. However, the screen I am building in this video is intended to act as a basic screen that you can then use based on your personal strategy to add more specific filters. So I want to keep things simple and therefore I use a 200 daily moving average. To do so, open the menu under price versus SMA and select price above SMA 200. This is a very popular long-term average used by both technical and fundamental investors to quickly and easily distinguish bullish and bearish stocks. Stocks whose price is higher than the 200 daily moving average are bullish and stocks whose price is lower are bearish. However, I add one more trend filter, also based on the SMA 200. In addition to the price having to quote higher than the SMA 200, that average must also trend upward. 
So click on the SMA 200 section and select the SMA 200 rising option from the menu. About 1800 stocks remain that meet all the filters. The next two filters that are part of this basic screen has to do with stock volatility. Basically, we are looking for stocks that show a sufficiently large price movement. After all, as a swing trader who is focused on catching partial moves in bigger trends, there is no point in investing in stocks that barely move in the short term. Your money is then stuck while there are better opportunities elsewhere. The first filter is also found under the performance tab. Use the slider on the beta and change it to 0.5. Beta compares the volatility of a security in comparison to the volatility of the market. A beta of 0 means no correlation with the market. A negative beta value indicates an inverse correlation, while a positive beta means a high correlation. So a value of 0.5 indicates a slight correlation with the overall volatility of the market. Remember, we don't want to be too strict with these filters for a basic screen. In addition, I also use an average daily range volatility filter, but you can also use the ATR indicator, which is the average true range. Both are available in the platform and you can find them under the same tab. Very briefly explained, the difference between the two indicators lies in the fact that the average true range takes gaps into account and that the average daily range does not. The ADR only looks at the highest and lowest price while the ATR also takes into account the closing price of the previous day and therefore includes gaps. The average daily range is based on the last 20 periods. For this screen, I demand that the ADR has to be higher than 1, meaning that the average daily movement of the last 20 trading days was more than 1%. So if you would select 2, that would mean that the current average daily movement is at least 2%. For this basic screen, let's start with the value 1%. So far we have selected a total of 7 filters. An overview can be found in the top right corner. So using this screen, Chartmill will only look for stocks that are priced higher than $3 and have a minimum market capitalization of $300 million. The two filters using the 200 daily moving average will only keep stocks in the long term uptrend. The three remaining filters, being Volume, Beta and ADR, ensure that the selected stocks are easy to trade and that the price movement in the stock is large enough to make a profit in a short period of time. Before going any further, I'm going to save the screen so that when I want to use this scan again at a later date, I don't have to manually set all the filters all over again. To do so, click on this icon and give this screen an appropriate name. Basic Screen Swing Trading, for example. Click Save. And from now on you can use the screen with one click by opening this folder in the stock screener and select your screen. So this screen already excludes a lot of stocks and allows you to start with a decent base. The great thing is that you can now apply all kinds of other filters starting from this screen, both technical and fundamental. And I provide a few examples to show the extensive possibilities. A first rather obvious filter is Region. I have not retained that in the basic selection, but if you only trade US stocks, it is of course logical to expand the basic filter with that by default. You can find that option in the general menu under the exchange option. If I choose US only, for instance, just under 1000 stocks are left. For Europe, the choice is much smaller and the number drops down to around 125. And to finish, let's also set Canada only as a region filter. 81 candidates remain. By the way, you can select not only the region, but also the index to which the stock should belong. To do so, open the index drop-down menu and choose your preferred index. I select the NASDAQ and of the 100 stocks from this index, there are currently 49 that meet our previously set basic filters. Suppose you are a swing trader primarily looking for stocks in a positive trend that are experiencing a pullback. Because we start from our basic screen, we already know that the long-term trend of all the stocks in this screen is positive. We set up the two SMA200 filters to that end, remember. First of all, to make sure that the medium term is also bullish, I define that the SMA20 must be above the SMA50, but also that the SMA50 must be above the SMA200. To do this, open the performance menu and select the SMA20. Select SMA20 above SMA50. Next, select the SMA50 
and choose SMA50 above SMA200. Hereby we have ensured that the medium term performance of the stocks in our selection is also bullish. Now how are we going to define the pullback? Simple, also by using moving averages. In this case the SMA20 and the SMA50. Open the tab price versus SMA and then check these two options. Price below SMA20 and price above SMA50. This ensures that we only see stocks whose price is below the SMA20 while still above the SMA50. Now let's take a quick look at the results. The first one that caught my attention is Synovus Energy. Price has retraced to the rising SMA50 which is the blue line on the chart while volume is low. The current swing low is at 20.06 so if a reversal pattern appears at this level this would be a double bottom. Together with the support of the SMA50, this can evolve in a low risk setup with a tight stop just below that blue line. SM Energy is a really nice one. At the beginning of May, after the first quarter results were published, SM made a strong up move. Price is now retesting the SMA50, but the main reason I'm excited about this stock has to do with the weekly chart. It is showing a nice volatility contraction pattern. Price is getting tighter and the weekly chart is showing a bullish flag pattern. Definitely want to keep in a watch list. To do so, click the plus sign and choose one of your existing watch lists or make a new one. I'm going to add this to my up on earnings watch list. And on top of that, I'm going to set a price alert. I want to be notified if price gets above that latest swing high at $52. This way you can easily go over the results to find suitable candidates. Currently the view is set to two charts because I like to see the daily and weekly chart at the same time. But you can quickly change this. In the blue horizontal bar next to view click on the inverted triangle. Go to the charts section and select charts instead of two charts. You will now only see the daily chart of each stock. In the same blue bar go to the right and open the drop down menu next to chart per line. Select the number of charts you wish to see side by side. In my case I choose 4. This allows you to scroll through the results even faster. To change the layout, add indicators or overlays, go to the chart settings menu. With this expansion I will look for stocks that showed growth in both revenue and earnings on a quarterly basis. In addition, earnings must have accelerated in the last two quarters. Once again we start from our base screen and add the following filters. Select the growth tab and set the following parameters. Earnings per share growth quarter to quarter at least 25%. Revenue growth quarter to quarter at least 20%. And earnings per share acceleration two quarters. That leaves us with 25 results. Now let's add an analyst rating filter. I want to see only stocks for which the analyst buy consensus is higher than 85%. To do this, open the Analyst section and select Buy Consensus bigger than 25% under Analyst Ratings. So we are left with two stocks in this case, Natera and RX Site. And if you want to know more about the Analyst Ratings for a specific stock, you can open the Stocks Profile page and go to the Analyst Ratings section where you will find more detailed information. RX Site in particular is an interesting candidate. It had a nice breakout from a VCP pattern and price is now retesting that earlier breakout level and yesterday an inside bar appeared. This looks like a nice low risk setup for short term investors assuming another rise to the existing high from this price level. Let me clear this analyst filter and go back to the performance tab where I show one other filter, the new 52 week high in the last 5 days option. From this list I would like to mention two stocks. Freshbet, which delivered a very good quarterly report and was above analyst expectations in terms of both earnings and revenue and as a result it also appears in this screener. And the stock price recently broke out and a further rise to the high of mid-2021 is certainly a possibility. Comfort Systems also stands out. Also a good quarterly report. The stock broke out, followed by a pullback. Yesterday an impressive doji candle was formed which again provides opportunities for a swing trade with a short stop loss below the low of that doji candle. I could show numerous other opportunities and breakouts aimed at finding attractive growth stocks but that would take us too far. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to use the base screen to quickly react to specific market conditions. 
In this last part of the video, I'll show you how to react to market conditions, again starting from the same basic screen. For example, let's say you want to get a quick overview of which stocks from this basic screen are active in the pre-market. Go to the performance menu and open the drop-down menu next to Signal. From here you can choose pre-market trading or more specifically the pre-market gainers or pre-market losers. Another option is to select only the sectors and or industries that have done well over the past few days or weeks. Looking at the sector performance over the past week via our market monitor page, the top three are industrials, consumer discretionary and financials. In the home screen you can easily select the different industries and groups separately. For example, if I select only consumer discretionary, I get 119 results. By default, these are sorted by their chart mode technical rating, but you can change that. For example, if I select one week performance, the order changes and, who would have expected otherwise, GameStop is at the top. When I change this to relative strength, you get a different ranking. Some stocks have broken out recently, but others are at interesting levels. GCT, for example, which shows a nice pattern of rising bottoms. From here, I can quickly open the profile page and view a detailed fundamental report, analyze analyst ratings or the latest financials, and even research forecasts for upcoming quarterly and annual results. The ability to seamlessly combine both technical and fundamental filters is one of the many strengths Chartmill has to offer. So now I'd like to challenge you to get started yourself. Think carefully about what is important to you. You can start with the basic list I created in this video and add your own touches, or you can create a completely new basic screen and start from there. Above all, I hope this video has made it clear that the quality basic screen is important. It ensures that you immediately filter out a lot of stocks that don't meet your basic criteria. You can then add specific filters to set certain emphasis that are important to you and that you can adjust according to the prevailing market conditions. So, did you find this video useful? If so, please give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you will be notified when new content appears. All that remains for me is to say thank you for watching and I would love to see you back soon.